this is a fresh new year. And you know, before the end of 2021, um, I was spending some time with uh, some of the key pastors of our church to pray, to seek the face of God to say, Lord, what is, what is in store for uh, 2022? And I think we've heard from God. And so the first thing I want to declare to you is that 2022 is the year of transformation. Can someone say a good amen? Amen. Let me say that again. This is a year of transformation. And that means that our individual lives are going to be transformed by the Lord. We're going to be renewed, restored. We're going to see things move in ways that we have never seen before. You know, the last two years, in many ways, felt like famine years or drought years. And even the enemy knows how to use COVID-19 to kind of separate the church, and this allowed times for us to come together. But 2022 is going to be different. We're going to see breakthroughs. Amen. We're going to see the Lord move in unprecedented ways. And today I want to speak to you a very short time about a new beginning. But the impact of it, guys, is we're going to see the Holy Spirit move very powerfully. So let me explain what I mean. Today's passage is actually one of uh, the most powerful passages in the whole Bible. It's found in the book of Acts, and we actually see the Holy Spirit come. So let us look at a passage right now. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, the disciples were in the upper room, 120 of them, waiting, seeking, praying. It says in verse 1, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And we have started the church for several months, but today there's something different. I tell you, I am not speaking casually. I'm not saying this to hype you up, but today something is different. Something has begun the Holy Spirit is going to start to move in ways that we have not seen for a long time. I declare that to you, and you will see it. You will experience it. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. What is the setup? The setup is this, guys. Before that three and a half years, the disciples were with Jesus. Jesus went to the cross, died, and then three days after he rose again, came back to the disciples now, for the next 40 days or so, the Bible teaches us that he actually explained more about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God to the disciples, and then he ascended. He ascended. That means that he actually, where he was standing at the mount, he ascended, kind of flew up to heaven. 500 brothers and sisters in the Lord saw that as Paul would record in his epistle. And before he left, he said, a comforter will come. The promised Holy Spirit will come. Now, friends, you know, we are New Covenant Christians, and so we are very used to the conversation of Holy Spirit. But I want to make one key note for you. The Old Testament saints did not experience the Holy Spirit in the same way that New Testament or New Covenant saints has. If you read, it's clear. Many times the Spirit of God would rest on one man, David. Elijah, Elisha, different voices of God's prophetic voice. But we don't see the Holy Spirit move upon the people and into their lives. We don't really see that. We see the people looking at the smoke at Mount Sinai. We see the people trembling at different portions of the Old Testament. But we don't see the people inhabited by the Holy Spirit. Now, as Christians, if we are truly following the Lord, we already know the Holy Spirit lives in us. That is undisputed. The issue, though, is there are ebbs and waves. And let me explain one thing very quickly. In the 1990s in Singapore, we were seeing an unprecedented move of the Holy Spirit. My gosh. It wasn't just lighthouse evangelism, but many ministries and churches experienced God 
in extremely powerful ways. People were coming to church and staying for hours, weeping at the altar. People were slain in the spirit all over. People had manifestations and visions and dreams. And then came the 2000s and it kind of stopped. We don't understand it. Was it a lack of prayer? Was it this or that? I, I'm not here to speculate. I'm just telling you that that happened. Now we come to 2020 and we've been seeing an age in the Christian world, the whole world, a whole world of methods, a whole world of programs. And nothing wrong with that. God can still use methods and programs, but I really believe that we're living in such an end time stage. And I want to declare to you that the Holy Spirit is going to rule, reign, and move in Lighthouse Evangelism once again. Can you say a good amen? Now, for us to see that happen, it requires all of us to say, Lord, we want to invite your Holy Spirit and we want to host your presence. You say, what does that mean? Uh, can't the Holy Spirit move as He wills? He can. But if you recall Revelations, the Spirit of God was saying, Behold, I knock on your door. If you will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and supper with you and eat with you. So if there is unwillingness to open our lives, our souls, our hearts, and also this church to the Holy Spirit, that's wrong. We have to repent and we have to say, God, we want your spirit to move. I believe that we honor the Father and we love the Son. And now it's time to also truly revere the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit in our families, in our cell groups, in our ministries, in our church. And you know what, friends? When the Holy Spirit moves in powerful ways in our midst, and you will see it, I declare to you, I have no fear of saying that, you will see it. I sense it strongly. The key leadership has sensed it strongly. It's going to come. When we see that happening, there's going to be so many things taking place that we can't even catch up. See, what happened is, once Jesus left and he promised them the Holy Spirit, the disciples, the 120 of them, were hiding and also praying in the upper room. Now, they believed Jesus because, in a sense, they saw him come back from death to life. But they still didn't know what he really meant when the Holy Spirit was to come. In verse 2, check it out, it says, and suddenly. So that's what's going to happen to us, friends. I'm not sure whether it's going to happen now, 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, but I can declare to you that we're going to see the move of the Holy Spirit in our church. That's what I can declare. I can't declare the time. Because suddenly, the Holy Spirit will come. It might happen today, and that's what we're going to set up to do. At the end of this short sermon, we're going to have a time where we actually invite and host the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, come and move in our midst, move in our nation, move in our household, move in our families, move in, in ways that we have not seen. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. You know, friends, you can't orchestrate this, right? If the Holy Spirit comes, the church of Jesus Christ, even for us as a ministry, we don't need to so-called strive to let the ministry move. Rather, we are saying, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, this ministry is yours. Our lives are yours. Move in and through us. We will make room for you. We will stay silent for you. We will raise our hands to you. We will praise and worship your name. We exhort you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are here. Holy Spirit, we invite you. We ask for your presence. And even now as I say this, you already sense the first touch. And I know it because I sense it here now. The first touch has come. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. And say that in your heart right now. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, we invite you here. Holy Spirit, we host your presence. Suddenly, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Verse 3, and divided tongues as a fire. Next verse, and divided tongues as a fire appeared on them and rested on each one of them. 
We want to see the Holy Spirit move. We want to sense the fire of the Lord move. And it's got to be the Holy Spirit. You say, what does that mean? It's not the power of the preacher. It's not the lights or the stage. It is we as His people calling to Him, praying to Him, crying out to Him, seeking His face. And we are saying, it's enough is enough. I'm done with COVID-19. I'm done with pandemic. I'm done with lukewarmness. I'm done with a Christian type of religion that has no power. I'm done. I'm done with what the enemy wants to do. I'm done with people sowing discord. I'm done with disunity. I'm done with death and disease. I'm done. And may the Holy Spirit come and rest. Now the disciples were now in a different stage. You know the Bible. Many of you are Christians for a long time. When you read the four Gospels, we see the disciples many times anxious, lack of faith, fearful. How do we know? Because many times Jesus appears to them and says, why do you have so little faith? Or do not fear, it is I. Right? Now, friends, please note, Jesus saying to his disciples, do not fear, it is I. And sometimes we as followers, we like to tell non-believers not to be fearful when we should also be telling ourselves. And you say, but pastor, what can I do? I'm like the disciples. I'm anxious, I'm fearful, I'm frightened. Even before Jesus went to the cross, the disciples were arguing who is the best after Jesus. Can you imagine? Jesus said, I'm going to die to the cross. And the disciples were fighting who's next. Who is going to take Jesus' place? Who is the best? They were fighting in front of Jesus who told them, I'm going to die for your sins. Why? Because in our flesh, when we are not visited by the Holy Spirit in power, we're going to see a lot of the same things that the unbelieving world is experiencing, you're experiencing as well. Fear to lose your job. Fear to lose our lives. Fear of disease. Fear of this. Fear of that anxiety all the time. And sometimes when we hear the Holy Spirit saying, do not fear, we take it away and rationalize it away and say, nah, you know, I, I shouldn't, no, I got to be very careful and very self-assured and very protective. And, and you know, that doesn't please the Holy Spirit. We need to live different. And this year is the year of transformation. And verse 4, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterances. Now, I want to say a few more words before we get into a time to really invite and host the Holy Spirit. There are dangers if we invite the wrong spirit. But today is not the day I want to deal with that. Maybe another time. But there are dangers. So later on, when we invite the Spirit of God, we have to make sure we are saying, God, we want to make sure it's your Spirit. First John would tell us, test the spirits to see if they are from God. So we want to make sure it's the Holy Spirit, that nothing is tempering. We don't want demonic spirits to come as we invite the Holy Spirit. We say, Holy Spirit, we want to make sure it's you. And you say, Pastor, how do I know it's the Holy Spirit? This is how you will know. The Holy Spirit will give you real joy. Real joy. Not counterfeit joy. Real joy. Real peace. If you sense peace coming to your heart, you must accept it as the Holy Spirit. You know why? Satan does not give peace. He comes to confuse. He comes to destroy. He comes to bring a lot of doubt. You want to rest upon the Holy Spirit, and when you sense peace, accept it already. Say, thank you, Lord, for that peace. Don't doubt. If you doubt, that peace can leave. Make sense? When the love of God begins to move, later on as we begin to seek the Lord together, and we invite Him together, and the love of God begins to move, and you begin to rationalize and say, no, it can't be. Don't do that. Don't do that. Receive it, say, Holy Spirit, I know you are a spirit of pure love. The, the other thing about the Holy Spirit that He comes to convict us of sin. Now, that's important, folks. When He convicts us of sin, it could be lust, pride, uh, anger, whatever it is. Now, again, when He convicts us of sin, it's a beautiful thing because that means that we can release it to Him and say, God, forgive me for my lust, for my pride. Forgive me for all these things and cleanse me deep within and change me deep within and transform me deep within and may your Holy Spirit move in me in power. Friends, the disciples before Pentecost and after Pentecost are completely different. Before Pentecost, they were like a non-Christian, except they follow Jesus. 
They all ran when Jesus was going to the cross. They all ran. After Pentecost, the disciples bravely went everywhere, even at the cost of their lives. Something changed in their spirit. You know what it is? The Holy Spirit moving. Now, here's the setup, and then we'll get to prayer, because I want to make sure that we really understand what's going to happen. We have not been praying for 10, 20, 30, 40 days together. So today is, I declare to you, day one. It's day one of many weeks. We're 42 weeks in this year. Every single time we come on Sunday, we congregate together. We're going to spend some time praying to the Holy Spirit and asking the Holy Spirit to move. For some of you, I need to explain what's going to happen. When the Holy Spirit begins to move, some of you are going to be a bit frightened. Don't be. It is a phenomenon that the Lord brings to bring restoration. But sometimes, during the process of restoration, He has to unearth certain things. Can I give you one example? If some of us have been demon-oppressed, not possessed, demon-oppressed, some of us might even, when the Holy Spirit comes, we might vomit out because there's unclean things inside of us and the Holy Spirit needs to expound. We may not even vomit out. Don't be worried, okay? Don't be worried. For some of us, there are new things that's going to happen inside your heart. You say, God, you're unlocking something. For some of you, you are going to begin the next few days, I declare to you, to see dreams and visions. Don't be afraid. If it's of the Lord, you clarify with Him. If you think it's of Satan, you ask the Lord, all right? When the dreams begin to come, and you know why I know it's going to happen? Because when the Holy Spirit moves and we don't hinder the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, like Joel would say, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. And you will dream dreams and you will have visions. And friends, please note, when the Lord begins to release those things, that means something. That means something. You can finally say, God, I've been waiting so long to once again have a fresh touch from you. I've been waiting so long, God, to know that you are in charge. I've been waiting so long beyond just what I know in my head, beyond just the Bible studies and all the sermons that I hear, beyond just all the songs I hear on YouTube, beyond all of that, I need to know deep within that your Holy Spirit still has power and can change everything. And today is the start. It's going to happen because I, I have one thing to confess before we pray. I confess to you very quickly that I apologize to you that the last three over years, because I was trying to, as your senior leader, trying to fill in the gaps of the church and trying to fill in all the things that we need to sort out in the church, there's something I've neglected, which is to really invite the Holy Spirit to come. So it's my fault. But having said that, as I confess that to you, I closed the valve of inviting the Holy Spirit, but now as your leader, I am going to open the valve, okay? So it starts with me. I open the valve of the Holy Spirit to come. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes, He moves sovereignly beyond Pastor Pace or any other pastors. It's not us. It's not us. But, but we have to say, God, we allow you to move and we want you to move and we yearn for you to move and we cry out for you to move and we are desperate for you to move and you, you can move, God. And you know, friends, I don't want to revisit 1990s. I was there uh, as a teenager. I, I believe that the end time revival and the end time spirit of God movement will be far greater, far greater. So now, today I declare to you, those in Tampines and Woodlands and watching online, now you are here in the upper room with us. Look at me, those of you online, you are here with us in the upper room. I don't know who you are. I don't care what you've gone through. It doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit of God can visit you afresh today if you invite Him and you allow Him to move. Are you ready? With that, shall we all stand? Come on, Tampanese will and stand. I don't have to give you much instructions. Look up to heaven straight away. Open up your hands. Open up your hearts. And now begin to worship Him and tell the Lord, Lord, please come. Let's do that for a few moments and let's see what the Lord says as we process this. Oh God, please come. Lord, in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit came in such powerful ways. 120 people, tongues of fire rested on them. Holy Spirit filled their lives. They began to speak in other utterance and speak in tongues. 
And then we saw Peter preaching a sermon and 3,000 people got saved that day. Friends, it is not the power of Peter's sermon. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that brought 3,000 people to know Christ. For some of us in this room, there's so much fear. There's so much fear. And nothing can change that unless the Holy Spirit comes, okay? Nothing can change that unless the Holy Spirit comes. Even if a pastor or myself tell you, do not fear, you will fear. But friend, if we invite the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes in power and might, you know what? Fear is broken. Oh, wow. In the name of Jesus, fear is broken. Wow. Gone. 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 Lord, there's all these fears that I sense right now. Fear of not enough money in the bank. My gosh, so many of us. Wow, it's true, Lord. So many of us, we put that fear before you right now. We invite your Holy Spirit to come. Hear these words, friends, for those of you that fear that. That God says to you, I shall supply all your needs. Do you hear that? Hey! Hear that in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're saying that I shall supply all your needs according to the glorious riches in Christ Jesus. I will put food on the table and bread and manna for you to eat. You will have waters of living waters from me. Do you hear that? Receive that right now in Jesus. Wow. Come on, friends, lift up your hands right now. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit together right now. Worship team, can you just sing this before the Lord? Come on, let's invite the Holy Spirit. Come on, welcome the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 